Hello everyone, my name is Ekrem Çetinkaya and today I will be presenting the LiDAR, lightweight dense residual network for video supervision on mobile devices. This will be the agenda of my presentation today and let's start with the introduction. When we look at the statistic about video streaming on mobile devices, we can see that around 70% of total YouTube watch time is actually coming from mobile devices and this is a huge number. On top of that, around 26% of smartphone users report that they encounter a video streaming problem every day, which is an issue that we should be aware of. You might ask how this video is delivered to the con uh, mobile devices and the de facto solution for this in the industry is the HTTP adaptive streaming. In HAS, when we capture the content, we first send it to an encoder. Then the encoder uh, compresses the video in different quality levels and different resolutions and stores them in the HTTP adaptive streaming server. When the client wants to play back a video, it first sends all the information like network status and the buffer condition to the AVR algorithm which is situated in the client side or server side, it can change. Then the AVR gets this information and evaluates it and then picks the suitable representation from the server. Then the server sends the representation, that segment, to the client and the playback begins. Over time, as the network conditions change, the AVR can request a different quality and the playback can continue as soon as the segment arrives. So let's assume we get a 480p resolution video from the server, uh, which is a bit quite low nowadays. And the default solution will be just to match the screen resolution using a bilinear interpolation here, uh, which will cause some artifacts on the image and it will cause a disturbance in the visual quality. The super resolution is a solution that, can, that wants to address this solution. And this learning phase super resolution methods can upscale the input image to a higher resolution while also maintaining a sort of a good visual quality, which is a pleasant experience for the users. When we examine the hardware capabilities of mobile devices on recent years, we will see a quite impressive improvement over in short time. Here, for example, we have the recent iPhones over the year of six year span. Time, and we can see the execution power of machine learning methods almost quadrupled in this case. So, what do we propose here? We saw that the mobile devices are becoming more and more powerful. And we know that mobile machine learning frameworks are here, so it will be easy to execute DNN approaches on the mobile devices. However, the execution time of super resolution deep neural networks is still high on the mobile devices, and we know a better quality of experience is required for high adaptive streaming videos. So we propose a lightweight super resolution network that constitutes the limitation of the mobile environment. And we, when we evaluate the results, we saw that its performance is on par with the state of the art super resolution approaches, while it also manages to run on real time on mobile GPUs. Let's talk about a bit about method LiDAR. Here in LiDAR, we have a network structure and we need to ex explain this dense race block first. This block consists of a convolution layer applied and a relu layer applied it afterwards, and it's followed by the same structure. Then we add a residual additional layer here, and the output from the first layer comes here to the second layer. Then the structure repeats one more time, and we also include the inputs from the we also include the outputs from the previous layers as an input to the upcoming layers. This structure is repeated three times in total, and then we apply a convolution one by one at the end to reduce the number of feature maps. And this is a structure called dense race block in our overall network structure. Here we will explain the overall network structure. And in the LiDAR network takes a group of frames, low resolution frames as an input. Here the resolution is can be arbitrary, but you can work with any resolution you want. We, in the experiments, we chose 10 frames as the number of frames necessary to group. So we take the 10 frames, we pass it to a dense residual block, and another one again. Then, after the outputs from the dense race blocks, we pass it to a convolution layer to prepare the input for the pixel shuffle layer that is coming a bit more later. Before the pixel shuffle layer that is doing responsible final upscaling the input, we apply a clipped relu function, which is limiting the output values between 0 and 1. This is a really important step for quantization, which is an essential task for running mobile-based DNS. And at the end, we apply the pixel shuffle layer, and in turn, we get a high-resolution output. 
that is upscaled by the upscaling factor u here. Let's show some results here. So first, we talk about our experimental setup. As a data set, we use the REDS video data set, which includes 7 to 20 B videos. And the REDS data set is divided by three. So the 240 videos are separated for training, 30 videos for validation, and 34 test sequences. Unfortunately, the test sequences are not publicly available. So we use the training set for training our network and validation set for evaluating our networks. We used the Xiaomi Mi 11, which adds Snapdragon 888 as the SOC, and it was running Android 11 as our test device. For training, we chose three state-of-the-art networks, namely FSR-CNN, ESP-CNN, and DDSR. All the networks are trained with the same structure, Adam Optimizer, Learning Rate Scheduler, and Mean Squared Error as the loss function. We report PSNR and SSM as the objective quality metrics, and also we report the execution speed on the mobile devices, which is a crucial task for mobile-based solutions. We use TensorFlow Lite as our framework and we applied Flow 16 customization for all the networks. First, let's check the execution speed of the state of the networks. For that, we use the demo application called MobileNM. And when we see, check the X4 upscaling, which is taking the 1080p input to 720p output, we can see that LiDAR is running around 140 FPS. Both FSR, CNN, and ESP CNN managed to run, time, run in real time here, which is above 30 FPS, but EDSR is running very slow. However, when we move to the X2 upscaling, only LiDAR can manage to run in real time while the other networks struggle to maintain that power. Let's switch to the objective metrics here. For PSNR, when we check the X4, uh, we can see almost all state of the art networks perform significantly better than the default upscaling factor in Android, which is bilinear interpolation. When we move to X2, this gap actually increases. Overall, LiDAR manages to maintain a competitive performance for the state of the art networks. When we check this SSM results, we can see a similar pattern here as well. To conclude, we present LiDAR, a lightweight super resolution network that considers the limitations of the mobile environment. It achieves significant improvement over bilinear interpolation, which is the default upscaling method in Android. Also, it, it achieves on par performance with the state of the art networks while managing to run in real time on mobile GPUs. Thank you for your attention, and you can reach me via these channels if you have any questions.